loose, Jim. <laughs> I'm going to move to the night side. I'll let you sit next to Doug, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So where we left off was, I think, 20. 20, right. Okay, so 20, we're leaving in the two discussed piles still. Yeah, we were talking about all uh, the stewards being on. Um, if you go down two paragraphs, and this is just a grammatical mm -hmm. suggestion, recognizing that business it should be dealt with. Um, I've seen that before, or uh, since I'm in the contract, I would just suggest you have to resolve as expeditiously as possible and have any, any agenda. Okay, no problem. I agree. Dealt with this a little negative. And for the record, um, I don't have any um, objection to, to inserting the word designated or for the, for the, for the okay. And also on the last page of that, it says arbitration hearing shall be conducted in the county designated hearing in New Corp, which is Florida. Um, it, it may not be a bad idea to say, you know, unless mutually agreed otherwise. Um, if everybody's out on the east side, um. yeah, that's fine. Unless mutually agreed to by both parties. Or mutually agreed by both parties. Unless mutually agreed otherwise, I think. That's good. Okay. Yep. Obviously, some other for the uh, phone lines. Yep. Okay. Twenty-two was one of the ones that. Yeah. Copy the 22 for a second. I want to see if my computer did something different than me. Yeah. For some reason, there's a bunch of words that have merged together by yes, the time I was done. And uh, in other words, as determined, it was the space in between. Yours is, yours is fine. I guess. There are a few paragraphs that were run on. Or? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we're going to have understand that those are just formatting. Yeah. yeah, but my, my copy is okay, so you want to just use this one, PA? Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, the 23 safety committee, is, is that the one you just handed them? Yes. I'm not signing that just yet. I got to sit down oh. and deal. Um, first of all, in the beginning of the second sentence, when we capitalize the word union um, in the same way that we capitalize county. Um, the, oh, I have it under union discretion, it's capitalized right. with it, yeah, sorry. It's kind of a disjointed paragraph in my opinion, and the fact that we talk about in the, the new inserted language, uh, department safety committees shall continue to be as determined by the individual departments. The union and the union discretion may have membership on the committee equal to the number of supervisory management members on the committee. And so the safety committee is formed, which shall uh, so which consists of six members. So I mean, do you still want to leave that language? They're not supposed to be struck out, or, or um, I thought you didn't want to. Well, is that more we making the distinction between departmental safety committees and a countywide safety? Okay, okay. countywide safety committee. Yeah, I think sure. that's what the second part deals with. Okay, but I thought it says in the event a safety committee is formed. So we're talking about a county countywide safety committee. Right, not a not a departmental. That's that was how I understood it. Yeah, that was the departments who have their own committee. Yeah, we have one for utilities, yeah, but we, I don't know. We about created another else. group of right. safety committees by adding the first sentence. I mean, oh. it have to be. Kind of the safety committee thing right there. Okay. So if we if we have two different types of committees, do you want to have a distinction and one being called the Department Safety Committee and the other one being a County Safety Committee, or do you want to not bother? I mean, if you say a safety committee, 
don't and don't distinguish which type it is. I'm just trying to, you know, have responsible language. That's all. So the I guess the solution, the, the suggestion would be, is when you're talking about a county safety committee, let's identify it as that. And um, even a county-wide county -wide safety, county -wide committee? County -wide safety committee. Okay. So people know which talking because, because I got confused. I, I remember right. that discussion. I kind of forgot about it. And, 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 and the county wide safety committee. So why don't we take um, that second sentence that says where well, we're going to add the word county wide before safety. Make that be, and then renumber all the paragraphs after it. But what is B now? That's referring to the county wide safety committee, right? Well, I thought, I mean, so. And then this, and the same as in D, really, what is now B, C, and D refer to the county wide committee. So, how about we just have, it's just a suggestion, A and D. A stops at. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. You know where B begins, B begins uh, in the events. Um, and then from there on out, it's just B. So A reads the Department of Safety Committee shall continue uh, and as determined blah, blah, blah. Um, and then that's the end of A where it says kind of on a committee. Then we have a new B that says in the event the County Water Safety Committee is formed. And then everything that's under it will just be part of that, so that part of B right. to lead all the returns. So you want to rework that? Mm -hmm. What are you trying to do? Get us to learn Spanish? What is a directorio? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually the, uh, yeah. the words becoming more. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm only kidding. <laughs> yeah. I thought Jim was trying to get us to No, that's on mine. Yeah. <laughs> that's on an hour version. <laughs> yeah, man. I see it on ours. Yeah. This is a countywide, or is this a uh, part? This is a safety meeting. Not a committee, but a meeting. So when you have a when a when a department determines that they want to conduct a safety meeting, I don't think that's the same as having a safety committee, right? No. Correct. That's Correct. something else. Yeah. There's we some have, other specific topic yeah, or issue right. yeah. yeah. to address. We have so. uh, utilities. We have a safety we have a meeting once a month. month. Yeah. And they go over safety issues. A safety committee may develop the agenda to have a mandatory safety meeting, as an example. But right, that's usually where safety issues are addressed, and we bring it back to the you know supervisor. The committee to discuss. Mm -hmm. the committee, yeah. So what you just showed me here was a mandatory safety meeting. That's just like a one-time event. You know, yeah, that's usually safety. like a tailgate meeting kind of thing. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. um, so we're gonna we're gonna rework this one. All right. Article 24, health insurance, we're going to set it sign off as it is current kind of language. Uh, medical leave, we initially 
actually had something on um, JJ, which was um, rejected. So for, in the spirit of getting this, uh, trying to get this thing wrapped up, at least as far as we can, we'll just agree to the status quo. This is one that I would like to use your copy because my page is really messed up. Um, yeah. AJ John is just a sort of jumbled mess. I think it might be a different version of Word, but... It might have been, yeah, because I uh, might know Burns normally. Yeah. Must have been just... Oh, I just got... I just gave you that one, so he hasn't yeah. signed that yet. Oh, really? Oh, I'll just change it. I'll fix it. Normally. But actually, no, there's this one. No, they all say. Oh, uh, yeah, you, you use the one from... Sorry, yeah, I would... Sorry. Uh, after we go through the contract. Well, we're, we're at the point now where we've already talked about seniority rights, and that's kind of one of that's the topics that she's talking about. So. I said, I should have mentioned being funeral. Sorry? Can we just the next article is funeral. And then we'll Basically, I was coming here because of the um, seniority clause, I guess, that we're all talking about. Um, I started with the county in 1999. It's, I'm now going on my uh, full 18th year of being here with the county. I started out in uh, customer service in animal control. I stayed there for 10 months. 
and, I, and as a customer service too, I moved over to the utilities department. As a customer service too, I took a lateral to come closer to home. Um, that was 16 years ago. Uh, I've been with utilities ever since. I, I went from a customer service two to a customer service three, and I believe that was in around 2004, 2006 air time period. And at that time, a customer service three description of the job stated that you had to be a supervisor and needed to take a supervisor's class, which Ben Deal did give a six month class that I had to attend. After returning from that, um, in the utilities department at that time, there was one manager, Anna Marie O'Dell, one supervisor, Denise Kaplan, and myself. The three of us ran the entire utility department in the front building for uh, multiple years into 2009 when Rita Persack came into our lives. I'm not even going to go back to those days. Um, after, at that point, when Bruce hired her, the object of the department at that time was to weed out, I guess, as many people as she possibly could. And in four years, we lost the entire utility department in customer service outside of myself, another woman, and maybe two other people that were there for a shorter period of time than we were. Now, as soon as she came in, my job description no longer went from a customer service three supervisor. She decided that the customer service three supervisor description wasn't what she thought it should be and that the customer service three should only be a lead. So they changed the description um, of my job and at that time it was almost like a demotion. I was no longer the supervisor. Anna Marie left. Denise got put into another job location with Bob Sigmund. And then after that, they decided that my job was just doing um, accounting work, which is basically billing and accounting is what I've been doing most of my years in utilities. And um, I do all the construction as far as taking in the funds and dealing with the builders. Was there a change in the rate of pay when the job description was revised? No. So what happened at that time was she basically took all my job descriptions away from me and told me what my new job descriptions were going to be. No change of pay, no change of title. They decided at that point, Michelle Baker did, that she wanted a list of all our job descriptions, and she decided at that time that my job in particular, because I was doing all the finances um, for the utilities at that point, meaning counting the money, eat, reckoning the books at the at end of the every day, did all that, decided at that point that um, my job really shouldn't be customer service due to the fact that I wasn't dealing with the public customer service, um, which they didn't consider builders, it was just the public. I was no longer answering the phones to the public or helping the actual residential customer. At that point, they decided that um, I would become an accounting clerk, of which I, they opened it up the job, I applied for the job, I went through the interview of the job, and I got the job doing the same job as I was before, but now with a title change as a customer, as an accounting clerk. Uh, that is my title at this time. I do not do any accounting clerk. I just want to have your same question. When it was changed to accounting clerk, was there a change in? Yes, I had an increase in salary at that time due to the fact that I was taking this upgrade in my, my. Uh, Thank you. Okay. So here, here was the clinch. Um, of course, as everyone knows, Reader left, and Craig McCandless took over. And when Craig came in, we were already working on the new CIS program, of which I dedicated five years into doing. I was on that core team and did the testing, and you know, went traveling and all this stuff. Okay, that was fine. When Craig came in. Um, and Bruce came in, we went live 
unfortunately, we should not have gone live, and they did anyway. Well, because of that, three weeks into the program, um, Craig had an issue with they could not get the books to balance. And I said, well, you've got me doing 100,000 bills that I have to look at on a monthly basis. You've got me doing billing as if I'm a billing coordinator, because basically that's what I'm doing right now. Um, I have to put all the bills together. I have to make sure that the meter readers are doing their job. I have to basically accumulate all this information for one bill to be processed. And I'm still doing it under an, an accounting clerk position. My job, and this is the joke to the whole thing, my job, um, because Bruce said to me, I said to him, which would you like me to do? Do you want me to do the billing or do you want me to do the finance? And, and he said, no, I want you to do the billing because that's the important part. We've got to get a bill out every month. I had this discussion with Barbara D. Simone and with Bruce at the same time, so maybe somewhere in her records she has it logged in. We discussed it. They hired um, Michelle Baker at that time, decided that she was going to take a woman by the name of Ms. Anita, or Annette, I'm not sure, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, into helping him do what I was doing in the past, which I had been doing for 14 years. And they hired her um, because she had a degree. Uh, she took over my job. I'm getting paid 30000 a year, and she's getting paid now to, for the exact same job that I'm doing, or was doing, for 85000 a year. And she couldn't do it, so she decided that she was going to need an assistant the job that I had been doing for all those years as a one-man band, she couldn't handle at that price range and decided that she needed an assistant. So they hired a gentleman by the name of Phil to help her out at $20 an hour because she needed an assistant. So 30000 that they paid me to do the job, they're now paying her almost 85000 to do the job, my job. And Seniority obviously meant nothing for all the years and experience that I had for working in utilities. So because I didn't have a degree to back me, I guess at this point after I did an excellent job and was told over and over again in all those years what a wonderful job I did to keep all the books balanced in utilities, which is not an easy task. I'm just waiting. I didn't know if you were. I was looking at the org chart. Oh, okay. I was okay. just trying to pull up the org because I'm confused about the person that you were saying. So I okay. Was org chart. I, I believe she took to over Mr. Nuremberg's job originally. Is it Anita Are you something? Annette Stahura? Yes. Okay. okay. Is that who it is? I was yes. trying to figure out who the person Annette. was. Annette. I couldn't remember if it was Annette and or Anita. You're, you're talking about her coming over to utilities, to utilities. when she left OMB. Correct. And, they only, and the reason they had to do that was because Bruce had decided at that point that he needed me to do something what he felt was more important, okay? So not only did she get my job, she also got an assistant to help her with the job, and now he just got a full-time accounting to clerk job, <laughs> okay? For a job that I did. Thank you for, for your hard work. We appreciate it. Yeah, I'm sure they did. At least we know where our money went. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sounds like you're done. No, I'm not oh, done. Because everybody else is jumping in now. No, I guess they're laughing at me at this point, no, which they can. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, that's, I'm that's listening, but, okay. but I think we agreed that we were going to take a break from what we were doing to listen to you. Okay, so I'm going to continue that. Thank you. All right. So, obviously, in all the years that I've been here, I've never gotten the proper movement, let's put it that way, um, I have not seen an evaluation in three years since Rita left. Craig never sat down with me and talked to me to say, am I doing a good job or a bad job? Obviously, I'm doing my job, so they don't, they kind of ignore you. Um, if you look at my records, I have a pretty good standing with the county for all these years. And what I've been seeing is the amount of favoritism that's going on in, in utilities is unbelievable. 
and I'm going to name names, and I'm sorry, but, I, and I'm sure maybe you've mentioned this before. We had a gentleman, we have a gentleman by the name of Mike Carbella who came in, and Mr. Carbella decided that he wanted three other people that worked with him from a previous job that he came from. So the county now makes up the job description so that it fits that person very nicely, and they can just bring them right in. And this is what's been going on in utilities for many years. I've seen good people leave because they're not being promoted. Um, I myself happen to really like utilities, and that was the reason that I stayed with the utilities department that long. I should have been a supervisor or a manager by now, and I've been passed over left and right because of the fact that, according to the county, I have no qualifications. My experience means nothing. So another factor that comes into it was I work with another woman. Her name is Joan. She's been with me side by side for 17 years. We've worked together. and. She helps me with the billing. She basically does the same thing that I do. She has been a data processor, even though she does not do data processing work, for all her years, I think, with the county. And recently, she applied for an accounting clerk's position because she felt that if I was an accounting clerk and she was doing the same job that I'm doing, that she should be with the same qualifications. Well, they took a young lady who's been with the county for about two years who came to Craig and said, I found a job outside of the county. This was uh, about October the 23rd of 2015, this last past October. She went to them and said she found a job outside of the county and would be leaving. So they decided, with all the openings, because the utilities right now has multiple openings they have customer service, they had accounting, they've got all kinds of customer service people openings. They decided on that to basically, she had put her application in as an accounting clerk too. She's a data processor. So they decided on October the 23rd, when she put in, uh, Craig said, we're going to make you the accounting, uh, the customer service too person. They retroacted her paperwork so that her job would start as of October 1st. There was no interview given. There was no anything done. They just decided this was the place she was going to go to. She interviewed for the accounting clerk a couple of weeks later, and she just got the job about two weeks ago. So she went from a data processor to I'm leaving to now I'm going to give you a job because we don't want you to leave at a different scale of a higher paycheck. But now two weeks later, we're going to give it to you even a higher one. So where does anybody stand in seniority if there was somebody that had a better qualification than outside of the fact that she's their best buddy? I don't understand how favoritism plays such a big thing in utilities instead of downright working and getting the job done properly. So my thing is, I'm here for seniority due to the fact that I've been here going on 18 years, have no movement, have no means of movement because I don't have a degree or qualify for anything when I was good enough to run the utility department years ago, but now I'm not good enough for anything and don't even have a job description that goes with the job I actually do. So I don't understand how it is allowed that you can take a person, hire them in at one job description, and expect them to do something totally different than the job description that they've been hired for. And nobody knows about any of these things. Nobody ever looks at any of our job descriptions of what we do or how we're doing it or where we really should be placed. So now I'm watching because Craig has left. He decided to waltz in all his good friends into higher management positions so that when he left, they would all just be 
very nicely cushioned with nice jobs. <coughs> Rob being one of them. Okay? Yep. He has Rob, now, Rob who? Um, Wynette, I think his name is. He was a supervisor for solid waste. But because, and I'm not mentioning names, of who he knew on the outside, because remember, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know what's good or bad, I've been here for so long that I know the old ways. I've seen the old ways. As a matter of fact, I've even complained of the old ways because Kevin and I met up about 10 years ago at the time when my husband still worked for the county, and I recall asking Kevin, why is it that Bob can make anybody, any position he wants, and, and they get a raise by just him changing their titles? And if I remember your response, Kevin, you said he can because he's a manager. Well, they have way more uh, clout than they should because they're waltzing in all their friends and buddies. And while they're doing that, they're literally destroying utilities. And that's the mess we're in today because of what was allowed to do by bringing in inexperienced people just because they had a degree. So yes, I am here for seniority because of the fact that nobody looks at these workers that have been around for years who have knowledge, experience, and should be paid well more than they're getting paid right now. And we've been on the low man of the totem pole in utilities, custom service, for years. Uh, just a question, because you said you'd been passed over many times. What jobs, um, which jobs have you applied for that you got passed over for? Well, just about, we were still in this building over here. I wanted to go upstairs as one of the accounting people for Bob Sigman. And from my understanding, his secretary told me that now, we can bring over 20 applications and give them to you. So you don't have to be on the top. I was the number one on the list. So okay, let's take these 20 instead of the first three and go, oh, I know her. I don't want that one. I don't want that one. And which I don't want which, that one. I'm sorry, which position was that for? Uh, for accounting one upstairs. Uh, accountant? An accountant one. <laughs> so, I never qualified for any of these because they needed a degree. It didn't matter that we were running utilities for all those years and did all the work. You did the job. <laughs> we weren't qualified because we didn't have a degree. Even though it had those little words on the bottom that said, you know, we could look at, we were told, sorry, that doesn't count here. So what did they do? They took that application back and they rewrote it exactly the way they needed it so that the person they wanted to get into that job position was hired. How fair is that? And, and how come no one in personnel looks at any of this stuff? Well, I, I mean, I don't understand. You allow somebody three weeks after to say, I want this retroactive back to January 1st to give this person an increase in salary when they never even applied, they never even interviewed for the job. We have many people interviewed for these jobs. I think with the situation you're referring to is the 21 days if a position's been performing, if a person's been performing work at a higher class, they have to wait 21 or 30 days before we retro back their pay. Okay, then I have a question for you. When Anne Marie O'Dell left in 2010, I was not here, so I can't. Kevin, you were here. I was not. Okay, well, manager leaves. Assistant supervisor leaves. I was the next in command. I got handed all their jobs before they left. We have no more working managers. They were both working managers and working supervisors. They handed me all Anna Marie's job. They handed me all of Denise's job. And I did it for all those years. Where was my increase of salary for doing their jobs for all those years? <laughs> Well, and you know, and I don't, I don't, I don't want to get into a whole debate about degrees, but you know, the, the county pays tuition reimbursement 100 percent if you want to get a degree. They so didn't, they, they didn't, didn't and, you know. Well, and we do. I was told we have before um, until probably 2009 right. when we, you know, and, and, and some of our people age, yes, but the thing, same thing I was told. Well, I was told go out and get a degree and we'll promote you, but I'm leaving. 
in eight but years. You know, she's she's going to cost me more money to get a degree. She's doing the work. And, and well, all of a sudden, certain things aren't important anymore. Well, I understand, but if the, if the, you know, I mean, positions are rated based on, and I mentioned it before, education, experience, degrees are important for some Well, then positions. why did they have her do the job for so many years if the degree was so important? Well, and then hire an outsider to do it. I, I think that, again, I mean, I can't explain. I don't, you know, I mean, I, I'm taking you at your word that you were doing all of those things. I mean, I know that there's... Take me know, at my word, go back to finance, ask the yeah. clerk of the court. Ask the people back there well, how much I did for them in all those years. Right. As a matter of fact, Colleen, before she even left, wanted me to go out to the clerk's office because when we were switching over to the CIS program, they wanted me to be the person in the clerk's office to be able to handle the finances because they knew that I knew it the best from the old system and wanted me to help them. And I said I was not traveling to Dade City for a job. It just wasn't happening when I lived right over here. Now that they have me traveling to Land of Lakes, which of course is now a decrease in my salary because I'm not getting any extra gas money to travel this far, where for the last 15 years I've been traveling right to this building. Which then comes down to the question of how come it is that some people can work over here in Newport, Ritchie, while others can't? How did they pick and choose that? Which was a big incident that I had and asked Craig that before he left and had no answer. It was only, well, I like that, so you can stay over there. You, on the other hand, you have to go over there. Utilities is a very, very large money maker for the county. And Ed will verify that everybody he speaks to has to come to me last. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. And I'm the one that sits and collects thousands upon thousands, if not millions of dollars on a day, doing my job on the phone, and at the same time, trying to get the billing done. But I'm an accounting clerk. I am a clerk. I'm not an accountant. I'm not an accountant one. I'm not a two. I'm not an anything. But my job will never go anywhere because of two things. And one of them mainly is my age and I'm sorry a lot of people I have noticed in this county will not hire people that are over a certain age I started with the county I was 45 years old next month or the month after I will be 62 so nowhere am I going to be starting going back to school at this time of my life when I should have been in a position of way higher than I am right now after all these years. So where is the fairity in all this? Where is it for people who have been here and dedicate their lives to this county? I didn't come in as a fly-by-night that I was here for five years and left. Stayed two and went on to a, a better job outside of the county. I stuck with what I knew and did what I feel was an excellent job all these years. So how does seniority help me in any of this? I, I don't, and, and that's sort of my point, is that I don't, it doesn't sound like even the situation you're describing is a seniority issue. Uh, it, it sounds like it's, you know, they didn't promote you to a job that requires a degree. We have a degree alternative program, which is actually set up for people that don't want to go back to school. Um, you know, and, and I, I, you I, only I, set that up recently. That was right. not available available to me. It was a couple of fifteen years, years ago. Two years ago, I think. Uh, it hasn't been that long. It's been the in the point. Works. The point we're trying to make is when we get into this with seniority, and we used to hear it with Barbara a lot, not, not so much wildly that happened, well, that don't take place. We just wanted to bring it in to get you a little taste of when we say what goes on out here from other people, it does go on. And as a matter of fact, yeah. Um, I have all of those degrees. Um, I have the library degree, which I did get through the tuition reimbursement program. Mm -hmm. When I applied for a position just a little bit higher than the one that I have, which uh, I believe requires a college degree, not the, the two masters that I have, um, what I ended up seeing in the file, I, I didn't get that job. But what I ended up seeing in the file after um, personnel switched to uh, a new uh, computer platform 
uh, I was able to trace back the uh, uh, responses or wh whatever was in the file uh, a few years. And that was in uh, 2010. Um, the person monitoring or doing their review in that <coughs> put does not meet minimum requirements. Excuse me. <laughs> I have a college degree. I have two master's degrees. How can I meet, meet, not meet the minimum requirements of that position? When there are people over me who don't have that, you know, who, who maybe have the college degree but not. That could be know. a system issue. It depends on the specific job posting. If it's like library and two youth services or something and they ask for certain youth experience or now something. So, or it, how you answer it, the question. Yeah. The system, if you answer it incorrectly, it will bump you. Yeah. These, these, were not, other category. these were not librarian positions. I, 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 you know, a year after I started with the uh, county, I went right into uh, an MLS program because I knew I wanted to get the degree. I already had a master's degree, but I, I knew I wanted to be a librarian. Um, in the, and I knew I wanted to move up from the position that I'm in, which is just about the lowest level in libraries that there is. Um, and my position does not require a college degree or any graduate degrees at all. Uh, the positions that I applied for in those two cases was, uh, I believe it was a li library, uh, library assistant one, and, and that's just one rung above what I am. Um, I believe now it requires um, a college degree, but I'm not positive about that. But anyway, um, what I saw in the file was that my manager at the time, and I'm sure it was her, put does not meet minimum requirements. And it's, a, it's something that I brought up with Barbara Simone maybe two years ago. Because once I found that, I was like, uh, you know, how can that be? Yeah, and I, I mean, and and I don't, I really, you know, I don't want to get I'm too just, far. I'm just saying it happens. It, yeah. happens. it happens. It happens throughout the county, and that is why we are here. She's just got one more yeah, thing. Yeah, I just, okay. 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 okay, you had said you thought it was because I just didn't have the education, so I wasn't promoted because of that. Well, if I go back to all the different things that I've looked at, most of the reasons why I wasn't hired was because they put in one of their friends. So this to you me know, is favoritism. I just, you know, I, I okay. have, so and you're the saying county that county has a lot of favoritism. And I don't think you're ever going to be able to break that. So seniority helps breaking the favoritism that goes on in this county. Because like I said, I watched Mike recently in the last three years, Wilson, three people that worked with him in the same company that he came from. Does that make sense? Yes. Anybody else Absolutely. could have drawn that, it does? Because well, other I, people yes. in that, other people could have done those jobs, though. Other people may have, but if he's familiar with the experience, that's what you're talking about engineering positions. No, Mike is a no. He's the yeah, facilities but who's, engineer. What is Joseph now? He's another supervisor, isn't he? He has a yeah, a degree, and he's engineer. involved with engineering. Yeah, yeah but engineer. is he a supervisor? He's not just a peon. He is a supervisor. Yes, hired in supervisors. Right, but, but you're talking about an area where those are PEs, licensed PEs and engineers. And so you if you're asking You me, don't think there's anybody else in the county that would qualify for that in-house? Do you know that for a fact? Yes, I do. Okay, well, I don't know why. The, it, it might, I mean, you're making assumptions that uh, uh, in areas you didn't even know they were engineers. So it's, it's very troublesome to me to sit here and well, go, he's oh, well, a boss. I know. Joseph's a boss, so I don't know what his... I know Mike might be an engineer. But, Mike is an engineer. The but as far as Joseph... Hiring, I don't know. From an engineering company. So, yeah, if you're asking me, does it make any sense for people to hire and people they used to work with? Okay, then yes. let me ask All right, I want to ask you another question then because of your, your, your HR. Um, right now, Mr. What is his last name? I don't even know. Flip. Mellinger. Mellinger. Okay. He, from my understanding, there's a list out there right now of supervisor, I mean, of uh, administrative. Um, Secretary. Secretaries uh, that he can hire from, and from my understanding, he doesn't want to hire from any of that list. He wants a new list that he can bring in from the outside, so that the woman that worked as his secretary from Marion County can come down here and be his secretary. Now, how fair is that? When you have qualified secretaries that have been with the county multiple years that are now going to be pushed aside because he has someone he wants to bring in. Where did you hear that the person from Marion County is coming? 
we're hearing that. Where, is, where, where are you hearing that? Where I heard are you that, hearing? I heard that from Mariana's mouth herself. Who's Mariana? She's she was Bruce's former secretary. former secretary. And she told me exactly what they were planning to do because she was part of that process of hiring and putting the paperwork in for eligibility of secretaries to take her position. She was retired, I thought, when Bruce retired. She hasn't What are you talking, here. three weeks? She that, left that in mid-December. Yeah, yeah uh, well, December the 18th. I, I, she, she I know met, Marianne. She never met okay? a new person. Well, yes, yeah, she did meet the new person. Okay. She was there. He came on the 9th. She didn't leave until about the 18th. Okay. Uh, am I lying? Is that what you're telling me? I mean, you're, you're looking at me like I'm lying to you. I think that I know that they met. hearing that, I mean, it's, it's kind of like I said, I mean, you, you've you know, thrown out a lot of facts and they're not exactly correct. And, and so I'm, you know, I'm just, I, th there's a lot of rumor that gets spread out there. And, and, and unfortunately, there's so much of this that isn't true. Well, let's true. see who he hires. Okay, well, that's fair. Well, let's conclude this part of the discussion here because I think the takeaway from what I've heard, and I appreciate you taking the time to lay it out, is but your conclusion was, and I wrote it down, is that you think seniority is important to have in the collective bargaining agreement because seniority breaks favoritism. Is that right? And allows movement for people who have been here for years who can't go anywhere. Well, who aren't going anywhere because of the No, way but they, they'll the never. Is. Yeah, the way the system is, no one can ever move. They're sitting there waiting, and they're doing their work. There's, but they're, and they're looking for their opportunity to move forward. But it never happens because of there's other no issues. You know, so like, I, well, some I of those you, issues are that the job description requires a degree. Right. Right. And how can they have you right. do that job? So one year. One one size doesn't fit all in terms of the explanation as to why somebody didn't have an opportunity. to and your position, I think, expressed through the union many times before, is that seniority, um, if not the total cure to that, puts um, the process on the heel. Right? Sounds about uh, pretty close to it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you taking the time. Thanks for coming out. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have a, uh, a revised kind of proposal for seniority to help us try and can we, all right, can we get back to finishing the seniority is an open article? Mr. Barton, right now. Would you already went by 21. I don't want to go back to 21. It, it won't take long, I'm sure. Um, this is this comic proposal that I, I basically drafted while listening to uh, this mm -hmm. presentation is not going to cure probably most of the problems, but it's a start. And Jim, I heard you say um, last time the bargaining was we introduced sections 1, A, B, C, and B into the contract, and when you acknowledge that uh, we could put those into the agreement that the Congress agreed to put those into the agreement, rather, um, that it's a start. It's a start working toward, uh, toward, working toward a relationship, and uh, a bargaining relationship, and seniority can be recognized by the parties, and you can't really, you can't get out of anything wrong all at once, but at least we can start. That's what you said. Paraphrase. I mean, I'm not, I'm not quoting you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's what you said. Um, and we did that. We put in section one, A through D. And all of the other um, provisions that we have proposed where A through D could be used in its application, we we'll agreed to. And so that left us with the remaining sections two and three. And the proposal today that I think would be a huge, huge, um, uh, big gesture on behalf of the county and to, and to us helping solve some of our um, problems. A lot of the ones that are uh, uh, not, uh, not mentioned, such as promotional opportunities. And, and I'll be the first to say that any employer has a right to determine what the qualifications for uh, a position would be, such in, in, in terms of uh, education and so on. So if you wanted to hire um, a position that you require a specific degree for, it's certainly within your managerial discretion to determine that criteria. And if the applicant didn't meet that criteria, then they're not going to get the position. I get it. Okay. Regardless if they've been here for four years or 50 years or 20 years or 10 years, it doesn't make a difference if you don't meet the minimum requirements, you don't get the job. But what, what's, goes, what's going on here it goes deeper than that. There's positions, there's openings that, that a degree is not the deciding factor. Needless to say, I'm not going to rehash the same arguments I've been putting forth before. 
um, these negotiations a thousand times in the past. I think that if we had a very simple amount of movement and F and G, as I'll describe in a minute, that we will be able to hopefully do a little bit more with um, alleviating some of the favoritism issues that are going on. Section 3F, um, subsection 2, begins with the word job assignments. You see that? I'm looking at it. Okay. It says job assignment, currently it says job assignments which have a locational component and job assignment has just traditionally been bid. Seniority is a factor that must be taken into consideration not the deciding factor. Um, the proposal is to um, reduce that sentence to say job assignments which have a loc locational component and shift selection, period. And then on to the next page, G. Hang on a second. Sure. So we're striking out uh, job assignment to the, to the end of the sentence. And then in regard to I just not they didn't notate this. Say that one more time. Okay. Section three F subsection two will read job assignments which have a locational component and shift selection. Okay. Uh, and I'll start the rest of that And then in G it says, uh, currently in cases where an employee seniority is not a deciding factor, the county shall articulate its justification for not recognizing seniority as a control of factor in the county's decisions is not subject to appeal or grievance. It basically means it's the county's way or highway. Um, so I'd like to re re propose that, or uh, to revise that in our proposal to read. In cases where an employee seniority cannot be considered because of operational reasons, the county shall articulate its justification for not recognizing seniority as control and factor period. Um, I'll read it again. In cases when an employee's seniority cannot be considered because of operational reasons, the county shall articulate its justification for not recognizing seniority as control and factor, factor period and striking the remaining part of that sentence. So Give me an the example third, of that. I'm sorry? I don't understand. Give me an example of All right, an example that could be that. considered for operational reasons because it's it's going to create um, it's going to create a disruption 